I was very pleased with what was going on in the first half. I thought we were very intentional with uh, our attacks and what we were what we were trying to do, and the guys were executing well up until just putting the ball in the back of the net. And uh, against a style that is that is challenging to play against, um, you know, for us in terms of the second half, there wasn't a lot coming into halftime to really change. It was it was about recognize how they're going to adjust their pressing uh, or their pressure uh, so that we could uh, adjust how we were starting our attacks again, because that was a big part of it. Um, and then, you know, when we get into those moments where we have our, our chances in the final final product that we just we need to put them away, you know, and, and make this game more difficult. A couple of things on the defending side that we, that we talked about. But it's uh, and we just we you know, the game shouldn't have been as close down the stretch, I felt like as as it was we needed to you know, we need to be a little more lethal when we're, we have those chances. And that's maybe the next step for this team is that we don't have to suffer and sacrifice down the stretch, but we, we take our chances better and, and we put a team away that we should put away a little bit earlier. So that was for me a little bit of the day, but in the end, uh, as guys get a little bit tired, then little mistakes start to happen. Um, that's when they're, they're, what they do starts to thrive because they, they, they make it challenging in the man on man marking. And, we made too many mistakes um, down the stretch. We got a little bit pulled apart on the defensive side of things, and and obviously Bondi made some incredible saves to keep us keep us in there at the end. But the group as a whole sacrificed, and they suffered through the last part in order to maintain a clean sheet. And uh, you know, and going into the break, we have five wins and two losses, and we're in a pretty good spot. So I'm pleased with the group overall. Do you look at this as a, another character builder? I mean, you guys bouncing back from last week. Uh, real loss, and then you grind out this one here. Um, that sort of builds your guys' character going forward. Well, yeah, I see it as <clears throat> as two things. Again, I thought the soccer in the first half was was pretty clinical in many ways. In terms, in, again, playing against a unique opponent, uh, of which we had a week to prepare for him. I thought the guys executed a lot of things um, very well, which was which was a nice step forward on on that side of things, the tactical side of things and their understanding and the execution of some of that. Again, just not the final product in some of it. And then, yeah, down the stretch, it becomes another one of those that you, you suffer a little bit at the end because you didn't take care of the business a little bit earlier. And those become character points down the stretch. And so it's early in the season, you know, character building wins when you, when you lock it down or hold on like that sometimes are, are good. Uh, but for us, we want to continue to, we want to, our steps have to be that we've got to get to a point where we put this team away earlier when we have that many opportunities. That, that has to be the next step. If we want to truly be a championship team, we've got to win that game going away. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Simon. Well, nice to see you. Kevin Baxter with the LA Times. Kevin, go ahead. Hey, great. Congratulations. Thanks again for the time. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, you, you talk about, you know, you should have put them away earlier and those kind of things. But isn't it true that a team in the course of a long season, you win games you, you should have lost, you lose games you should have won. This is a game where you put over 20 shots, you have over 20 shots, and you win on an own goal. I mean, what do you take away from that? That seems to be kind of a good sign, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we'll take them again at the, at the start of a sort of a new project with a group that we're piecing together and, and guys are coming together. And you take every win you can get in the process of building towards the vision of the group you really want to ultimately be. And so we take every every win we can. Again, it's a group that is working hard. It's a group that is, over the course of this game, I thought did a lot of things right. Uh, and in the end, it's a group that had to suffer a little bit down the stretch to hold on to the three points just because of the way the game played out. But that's that's soccer. And, and you can't ever really dictate exactly how the game's going to go for 90 minutes. Sometimes you just have to adapt and adjust, especially if you don't put away the chances you have. Then. You have to adapt and get results, however, however you need to. And that was the that was the latter part of the game. We just we had to adapt and protect ourselves and and do the best to just to scrap it out. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Again, that's it's a sign of a of a good team who is finding ways to to take points, especially you know in in stretches of games when it's not going the way we wanted it to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kevin. We'll go next to Gio Garcia. Gio, go ahead. Hey, Greg, uh, congrats on the victory. Um, Thank just you. on that point, obviously, you, you brought in uh, Samuel Prancer, and he was able to create that opportunity for you guys. Uh, what are your thoughts on him and what this, meant, this game meant for him? Yeah, I think <clears throat> for Sam to, to create a goal, to get a goal um, you know, off the deflection, didn't really matter how. It's just the, 
you know, when guys come in, it's to be able to contribute to the team and, and you know, for an attacking player, it's to be able to contribute in the way of assists and goals and things like that. And so I, I think for him, he's had some, some good stretches and some times where he's still trying to adapt to the league and the teammates and, and understand everything that's kind of going on around him. I think uh, it's a huge moment for him to feel like he's really contributed to the group in a, in a way where you can see it on the scoreboard and you can see it in the points column. And you can, it's not just in the work or, or a moment here or there. It's actually, there are actually tangible numbers there that, that he has now that are, that are with him that he can, uh, you know, he can feel good about. And so... Uh, I'm happy. He, he's still adapting. He's he's one of the players who probably speaks the least amount of English on the team, and so some things he picks up, some things he doesn't. We're trying to work with him on that. So he's still he's still adapting to a lot of things within the environment as things are going on and happening. But but he is uh, he had a bit of an ankle issue at last week. We know, so he didn't train the whole week this week. So getting in and helping us to make a difference to get three points, I think, is a huge thing for his confidence and just again him continuing to settle into our team and this league and everything else. So uh, I was I was pleased with that. Thanks, Joe. We'll go next to Sophie Nicolau. Sophie, go ahead. Um, Jonathan Bond is turning out to be quite a leader in this team on the pitch. Uh, he's very commanding. Uh, he gives this sense of confidence to that back line that maybe Ella Galaxy hasn't seen in a couple of seasons. Can you tell us a little bit about whether or not he's that kind of guy in training and behind the scenes as well when he takes on the persona of you and he's one of your most leaders on the pitch? He was exceptionally impressive again today. He he is. He's uh, he's a very hard worker. Uh, he's very you know, open-minded in terms of learning and and the work he's putting in and working with Kevin on the goalkeeping side and us and just in the terms of the vision of how we want our goalkeeper to play. Um, he's obviously a very talented goalkeeper who, you know, who didn't get a ton of opportunities over in England, but he's he had the opportunity here to come in and, and to, to earn the number one spot and be the number one guy of which a team could rely on, and he's been every bit of that. And, and I think... As he has settled in, he's, he's as you mentioned, he's become a, a leader in the back. He's become a guy who's communicating to everybody uh, in important moments, and he's very connected to the group um, in every aspect. And so it's wonderful to have that because it brings a lot of confidence, as you said, to the line in front of them. It brings a lot of confidence to, to the group to know that, you know, on the odd occasion when you make a mistake, tonight maybe too many saves for on his behalf, but um, on when you make the mistake, you have somebody back there who can really help you out, and he's been fantastic in that way. And uh, as I say every game, we've got to start to minimize the number of those saves that he has to he has to make, but it's nice to know he's back there and um, and doing it for us when we need it. Thanks, Have a great evening. Thank you, you too. Thanks, Sophie. We'll go to uh, the final question with Chris Maldonado. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Coach, thanks for the time. Hey, Congratulations on your win tonight. Congratulations on the continued unbeaten streak at home. I did have a question regarding Jonathan Dos Santos. He went down in the 53rd minute. Um, can you give us any details on that? Was it uh, something that was previously bothering him, or was this something completely new? It was... <clears throat> Felt the, the calf tightening up. Uh, he's had issues through the early part of the season with cramping in his calves and, and different moments where he's had little had calf issues. Uh, nothing that so far that we've had to deal with in any serious way, but things that have been de debilitating and, and whether that be in stretches of games or, or whatever. Um, I don't know that it's anything beyond the, the tightening up and feeling like he couldn't really um, move the way he wanted to out there or if there was any any fear of, of further damage or risk that was associated with, with why he couldn't really continue. But um, I don't have any further really information other than uh, I don't think it's anything serious, but I, um, but I don't have anything more really to add to that at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Greg. We appreciate your time as always. That's all we'll take for today. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend.